The last thing we always hear after trouble strikes is, if I had known. It is dangerous to take things for granted, then find yourself alone in deep mess with no one to turn to. Only you and you alone will suffer the consequences. Serious changes are taking place around the world, yet many of us continue to hop along our merry way, sadly uninformed and unprepared. Regardless of how safe you may feel, you will soon realize that unless you have a strong support system in place, life will become very difficult. This is why we must take immediate steps now to secure ourselves by becoming a member of a strong support system before things are too far gone. Lifeline Financial Programs is the strongest support system you can ever have. Lifeline offers the best option for social, financial and emotional support as we prepare to meet the challenging days ahead. Lifeline is the only program which offers not only financial support, but social and emotional support as well. Regardless of what anyone may say, if you do not have strong financial social and emotional support moving into the trying days ahead, you will face some very serious challenges. Find us now before your situation change for the worst. Take me seriously. Don't allow things to fall apart then you say, if I had known. Get registered with Lifeline Financial Programs today. Protect yourself. Let us shield you against the tough days ahead. Call us at 540-4555 or see us for more information. Lifeline Financial Programs. The gateway to a better future.
as we get going, before we do anything, as usual, the custom is to give thanks to the streams of water, to the pools and the lakes, to the maize and the fruits, to the medicinal herbs and the trees, to the forest trees for their usefulness, and to the animals that serve as food and give their pelts for clothing, to the great winds and the lesser winds, to the thunderers, to the sun, to the mighty warrior, to the moon, to the messengers of the Creator who reveals his wishes, and to the great Creator who dwells in the heavens above, who gives all the things useful to men, and who is the source and the ruler of health and life. To the great Creator and for all things, we give thanks. This is customary. And uh, let me say a very special good evening to everyone, uh, wherever you're watching us from. Already I'm seeing uh, some friends showing up in our uh, comment section, identifying yourself where you're watching us from. We welcome you. And for all of us who uh, are joining and will join, please share. Yes, please share. This is going to be a very interesting presentation. And of course, as customary, we continue to do what we do here best on a Monday evening, right here on PSI TV, on the raw truth. If you're new, please go to uh, YouTube and subscribe. Be sure you subscribe to the page, to our platform, that uh, whenever we send out notification, you will be first on the list to be updated. Yes? Uh, share with your friends. Share, 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 because we have quite a bit to cover this evening, and of course, it will get quite interesting, absolutely. We have our special guest, Commissioner uh, Mark Collins, and of course, uh, an amazing gentleman. He'll be coming on tonight. Uh, however, that will not happen until after we get into news buzz. So uh, share with all your friends, invite them in, and of course, when we come back from news buzz, right after, we will be having the commissioner himself. So you stay tuned as we uh, take you down the lane for some more information. Back in a minute. A lot has been happening, and uh, when we look at it, it's, it's quite interesting. Uh, the world is shifting, changing fast, and while the world is changing, uh, it seems most all of us are changing as a result. Uh, nothing is to be taken for granted. We're living in serious times, and when the day is over, we must position ourselves to deal with what is coming. Nothing is going to be as we had it before. The world is changing. And um, we need to be cognizant of this fact as we move forward into the 21st century. Now, we, we must, first of all, be aware that the whole financial system is changing. This is coming out of Britain. It's coming from other parts of the world. The G7 is preparing for this. And of course, we all need to begin to prepare for what is coming. Take a look at this video. Almost every central bank in the world right now is working towards CBDC implementation. They are sneaking an entire new financial system right under your nose. For example, the most recent development is the Bank of Jamaica's CBDC, Central Bank Digital Currency, that had a pilot and it was successful. They plan to do a national rollout in Q1 of 2022. With this CBDC tracker, we can see that there is basically a central bank in every country working towards 
ask a CBDC. What does this ultimately mean? Well, I believe that they actually want to phase out cash. They want to get rid of physical cash so that there is no private transactions and they can use programmable money because that is what CBDCs are. It is a digital currency and it is programmable. The CBDC, there will be no privacy and they will be able to further control your money. This is why you should follow Crypto Mason to learn about what's really going on and learn about crypto, DeFi and Bitcoin and many other things. So the UK is currently the head of the G7 group. That's the world's most economically advanced countries. And the UK currently chairs the G7 group. Our chancellor, who does our economy, called Chancellor of the Exchequer, his name's Rishi Sunak. He put out this video saying that um, what they want to do is bring in this uh, thing called the central banking digital currency. They want to replace fiat paper money with digital money as a competitor to Bitcoin and crypto money, right? But instead of being uh, decentralized currency, it will be controlled by a government. It's digital currency, but controlled centrally through the banks, Bank of England. So instead of having a bank account with whatever, HSBC or Bank of America, you'll have a bank account directly with, in the American context, with the Fed. In the UK, directly with the Bank of England. You have a personal bank account and you're given digital money in that bank account. These are called central banking digital currencies. The Chancellor of the Exchequer in the UK has already announced their intention to do this as the G7 group. And these, uh, if you look up... Um, this sounds terrifying. If you look up I, uh, the Telegraph newspaper. Uh, Central bank digital currency. Uh, currency that, is that, that the one down below? Digital currency should be programmable. See that one there? Yeah. Now what yeah. they're doing is they're saying, you know, everyone knows that with inflation at over 5%, it's now 5.4%, right? Uh, our fiat money, the paper money, is increasingly becoming worthless and we're headed towards a big disaster. They, the Fed wants to raise interest rates. But we're in so much debt that if you raise interest rates, people are going to suffer because everyone that you know we're living on debt as western economies so they realize that this kind of the lifespan of paper money is fast coming to an end because of the 2008 economic crash in particular so they're bringing in these central banking digital currencies why is that word programmable in there so what they said in that article and that and the chance to put a video out saying this as well they've said that this money that you will earn from work instead of having paper money you have this digital money it's programmable so that you can't buy certain foods or if you do something that your employer doesn't like it's all in that article you won't be able to spend your money in other words it's not money they're vouchers they're like food vouchers and they can be programmed so that like the Chinese social credit system that if you try and use them on a certain thing it won't work you say you want to buy a burger and they want you to buy bugs which is one of the examples used if you start to try and buy unhealthy meat just won't work you tap you tap your card you can't buy the thing because you've met your quota that month of burgers you have to buy something like a, a vegan meal so yeah? it won't just be money in the sense of the way we have dollars or pounds today yeah it'll be something that's controlled in terms of your ability to distribute it which is why I'm calling it a voucher it's a coupon but even a coupon if you have a coupon to buy bread yeah. you can still buy the bread yeah. like there's but no you can't buy see that coupon to buy bread what you can't do is buy a burger with that coupon it's for bread right yeah right so there's the video the group of the world's seven most advanced economies the g7 is launching a set of public policy principles for retail central bank digital currencies cbdc's central bank digital currencies could be a digital version of money a bit like a digital banknote that could be used Right, so that's the guy who runs our economy in the UK. His name's the Chancellor of the Exchequer. And here is the article. Bank of England tells ministers to intervene on digital currency programming. Yeah, And here's a quote from the article. Digital cash could be programmed to ensure it is only spent on essentials or goods which an employer or government deems to be sensible. Holy shit. I'm going to take it one step further for you, Joe, right? So the Checkpoint Charlie exists everywhere. They bring in digital banking, central banking, digital currencies. You've got a scenario now that you're checking in and out everywhere you go using vouchers that are programmed and you can only spend where you're told you can spend them. There's another word for that, man. That's called the Chinese social credit system. So what they are telling us, and when I say they, who's they? People in power. That's the head of our economy, the Chancellor of the Exchequer. Second most powerful person other than the Prime Minister and maybe the Foreign Secretary in the UK, right? He's telling us, I just played it there for you. He's telling us that's what he, as the UK, the head of the G7, want to bring in for the G7. And if I'm speaking to you the way I'm speaking now, and my employer or government, you heard that in the quote directly, yeah? Deems me as saying or doing something inappropriate. Suddenly, I can't actually pay to come here and speak to you anymore. 
my my digital currency won't even pay for the ticket because it will be known that I'm coming to speak to you. Sorry, your your vouchers don't allow you to purchase that ticket to go and speak to Joe. And this is where we get into the kind of censorship that we see in social media that is not you can't have that kind of censorship with the first amendment in in, in normal discourse mm. but you can have that kind of censorship if you've developed a digital platform that distributes information but it's a private company yeah. so think about what money is where you can spending on spending on whatever you want versus this digital currency which is essentially controlled Right, and uh, that is uh, a synopsis of the latest news coming out of Britain, of course, for all our overseas territories. Yes, uh, brace yourself. Jamaica is already looking at this, and um, seems to be a very feasible option. And of course, uh, the move is to go cashless. I guess it will have its advantages or disadvantages. Who knows? Let us see what's coming. Finally, on News Buzz, we look at what is happening with the whole situation. The big C, as we see it, all the mandates and the jab and all of that. It seems to be crumbling. We notice that many uh, people across the world, many countries across the world, are now lifting the mandates. It's the recommendation. And of course, this is coming down. If I should... Uh, uh, just look at uh, some of our our uh, our clips here. We have some very interesting clips that I I would want to share with you. And uh, it 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 gets very interesting as we look at. Uh, at what is coming. We need to brace ourselves. I'm not sure how soon this will be coming to us in the, in the Virgin Islands, yes? But um, this is something I think we need to begin to look at um, as we move forward. Quebec, and this is coming out of the C CTV News, Montreal. Quebec dispatches passport or ditches passport requirements and most restrictions on Saturday. So Quebec has thrown it out. Uh, it's in its February 14 recommendations, public health notes, however, that 2 million Quebecers have been in contact, in contact with the virus and, the, the, and these people, whether vaccinated or not, have an extremely low risk of being contagious after their illness and or of being recontaminated by the same. And if I should look at this right here, it is saying that as of Saturday, which probably would have been Saturday gone, all public places in Quebec can increase their capacity to 100%. In addition, there will be no capacity limit per table in restaurants, bars, taverns, and casinos, and these establishments will be able to return to their normal hour of operation. All right, and uh, if I am to look at what is happening in uh, Puerto Rico, quite interesting. Uh, Puerto Rico has also um, lifted all mandates. The Virgin Islands Consortium. Yes. Puerto Rico lifts mask mandate, removes travel uh, portal requirement for domestic travelers. The story says Puerto Rico has taken some big steps back to normal CS, uh, cases of the big C dwindle on the island and uh, it is saying here that the governor, just cutting it short, the governor also lifted the restrictions on capacity limits at public and private businesses. And uh, patrons will no longer need to show proof of vaccination or a negative COVID test to enter. 
further the vaccination requirement for health workers, restaurant employees, students and teachers has been lifted. Quite interesting, huh? So this is where we are. And uh, it gets a lot interesting as we watch, uh, uh, we watch things change for the better, perhaps, I'm hoping. Let's look at what is happening with the WHO, because this also is very interesting to note. Uh, yes. The WHO. Um, has made some recommendations and the recommendation is to lift or ease the big C related travel bans. Lift the big C related travel ban. The World Health Organization this week recommended nations to lift or ease their existing big C related travel restrictions, saying they could uh, exacerbate economic and social stress related to the pandemic. The new recommendation was made Wednesday by WHO's International Health Regulations Emergency Committee on, on the Big C following its most recent meeting. The report says countries should lift the bans and restrictions because the committee found they do not provide added value and continue to contribute to the economic and social stress experienced by citizens. I want you to note that. So it is now becoming a very serious matter. And of course, the word is out. The, the, the WHO has made their recommendation that, um, that the mandates be lifted. As a matter of fact, uh, it was the CDC which stated the other day that uh, nations under nation nations with one hundred thousand uh, people and below and below nations up to one hundred thousand one hundred thousand are considered low risk areas. Yes, so they're also uh, uh, recommending that mandates be lifted. Very interesting as we look at what is happening worldwide and uh, just to cut it short i think uh, fauci himself uh, uh mr fauci he made some recommendations let's let's listen to what he has to say the only way you could tell if it's transmissible if you can show that there really is live replication virus in you and the tests don't measure that i think if somebody does come in with 37 38 even 36, you got to say, you know, it's just, it's just dead nucleotides, period. And why did he say that? Based on thorough assessment, and of course, these are the reports coming in. Uh, cycles, I guess, it, it, I guess it is with this in mind that he said um, up to 36 cycles would be dead nucleotide. It is saying here that up to 17 cycles. Um, 100% accurate rating. You, you can see this for yourself. This is the latest assessment. Um, it's interesting that most countries run a 40 to 45 cycle. Um, 40 to 45 cycles. Uh, however, based on thorough assessment, up to 17 cycles will give you a 100% accuracy reading. So it's quite interesting as we see these things coming out from different parts of the world. And... Uh, is COVID dying? Let us see this. There is so much going on that I, I'd love to get your take on. And I think the first thing I want to, you know, talk about before we get into what's really happening is kind of what's now completed. And that's that's COVID. The COVID narrative has, they've almost just completely dropped it like it never happened. And I'm curious what 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 you think of, of that and, and you think we'll, we'll see any more from it? No, we won't see any more from it. They can't resurrect it. There's no longer any... Um, emotional strength behind the meme. Humans are funny critters because uh, when you get something like that going, when you get some momentum going, it takes a continuous 
uh, pumping of it in order to maintain that. And so that's why they did all of that drag, 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 all the death rates for two years. All of this stuff was in order to maintain that momentum. The minute it slacks off, it starts dying. Once it gets to a certain point, it will cross the threshold, and they would have to have a very, very, very dramatic kind of a thing to resurrect it. So it would have to be uh, something where everybody could see, or they'd have to fake it, uh, could see thousands of people dying on the freeway of it or something, you know, something really weird to, to get us to even pay attention to it anymore. So the once the herd has shifted its attention, that's it. The last thing we always hear after trouble strikes is, if I had known. It is dangerous to take things for granted, then find yourself alone in deep mess with no one to turn to. Only you and you alone will suffer the consequences. Serious changes are taking place around the world, yet many of us continue to hop along our merry way, sadly uninformed and unprepared. Regardless of how safe you may feel, you will soon realize that unless you have a strong support system in place, life will become very difficult. This is why we must take immediate steps now to secure ourselves by becoming a member of a strong support system before things are too far gone. Lifeline Financial Programs is the strongest support system you can ever have. Lifeline offers the best option for social, financial and emotional support as we prepare to meet the challenging days ahead. Lifeline is the only program which offers not only financial support, but social and emotional support as well. Regardless of what anyone may say, if you do not have strong financial social and emotional support moving into the trying days ahead, you will face some very serious challenges. Find us now, before your situation change for the worst. Take me seriously. Don't allow things to fall apart then you say, if I had known. Get registered with Lifeline Financial Programs today. Protect yourself. Let us shield you against the tough days ahead. Call us at 540-4555 or see us for more information. Lifeline Financial Programs. The gateway to a better future. Greetings, good evening, good evening, good evening, and welcome back to the Raw Truth. Of course, it's your regular Monday evening program right here on PSI TV, of course, seen across the world by our friends across the Central Americas, North, South, worldwide. We thank you so much for joining us. And of course, as we take you down the streets of the BVI, I think it's a good time that we focus on what is happening locally. We have been speaking with some of our people on the, uh, I call it the war front <laughs> within the BVI. And uh, some amazing work has been happening on the back end and we haven't been hearing much about it. So I think the idea is quite uh, commendable to feature our hardworking soldiers, our, our warriors who have been uh, keeping things together right here in the in the British Virgin Islands, and of course, commendably so. I think the time has come to to give credit to our people as they stand strong amidst all the crap that could be happening or wherever it is happening in the world. We still have some very strong people right here in the BVI who are keeping things together. This evening on our program, we have none other uh, but Commissioner Mark Collins of the. Royal Virgin Islands Police Force in the BVI, and of course, an amazing gentleman. I, I, I happen to have uh, had some 
uh, had, had a little chat with him a little early. And of course, he has some great plans for the BVI. He has some amazing, uh, an amazing vision for this territory. And as he continues to, to, to keep things together uh, uh, in the police force, I think it is commendable that uh, he has taken, taken on the challenge to do so and he has made himself available to be here with us, even in the BVI, to continue to do what he knows best. Should I call you the Honorable Mark Collins? Welcome. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Kenny. Commissioner is... <laughs> yes. Yes, Commissioner is fine, I'm sure. <laughs> All right, and of course we welcome you to the raw truth. It is, uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's an amazing opportunity to have you as well, as we look at exactly what is happening here in the, in the BVI. First of all, tell us a little about yourself. Who is Commissioner Mark Collins? Talk with us. Well, thank you, Kenny. I've, um, I've been a police officer for thirty-six years. I uh, served in a number of police forces in the UK. I um, primarily have been a detective all of my career. Um, I was head of the counter-terrorism unit in Wales. Uh, I was deputy national coordinator for preventing violent extremism. Uh, and I finished my policing career in the UK as the chief constable in David Powys, which is one of the Welsh forces. Um, so uh, I've enjoyed 36 years uh, and uh, I continue to enjoy my role very much. Uh, uh, I come into work every day uh, and working with some amazing people. And uh, it's been an absolute pre pleasure and privilege to, uh, to have been recruited in the... Uh, the RVIPF as their, as their commissioner. Amazing. Wow. When you look at it here from what, from what you are seeing, uh, is there a significant difference between what you're seeing here and what you had in Britain? I think policing is policing wherever you are in the world. Um, you know, policing is, is the same. Um, there are different challenges, of course, in yes. terms of resourcing levels and, and, and issues that are particular to some, some territories and, and some police forces. Um, but being a police officer in the UK is, is, is not dissimilar to being a police officer here. You go out and you're dealing with burglaries, uh, motor vehicle crimes, uh, you know, people that drive without insurance or uh, helmets and things like that. Um, uh, and um, it, it's pretty much the same the world over, I'm guessing. Yes, amazing. The, the, this territory seems to be pretty unique. And uh, after 16 years here myself, the, there has been... Uh, uh, I call it some some unique. Uh, I call it a unique landscape, perhaps. And uh, I'm sure, as a police uh, chief, the, the the commission of the force, you perhaps have been exposed to some 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 unique issues as well. If you were to highlight any of those, uh, what what might some of these be, if I may ask? Well, I think you are right. It is unique in as much as um, you know the Virgin Islands is made up of of a number of islands. We've got uh, uh, police presence on four of those islands, Joss Van Dyke, Virgin Gorda, Anagada and Tortola. Um, uh, and the unique, the unique challenges, quite simply, uh, are that um, you know, the security of our islands is, is my paramount uh, priority. Uh, mm -hmm. And I know that I speak for the governor as well. The security of our islands is really, really important. Um, it would be remiss of me not to say that over the last few months, uh, we've had some quite serious offences occurring here. Tragically, we've we've seen some some murders taking place. Um, I'm not going to go into the details about those, of course, because they are still being investigated. But um, those type of offences, uh, of course, draw draw attention to to the police service uh, and worry the community. Um, and one of the first things I said when I got here was, I wanted to have the trust and confidence of the community to do what we do, um, and that takes time. Uh, and I am starting to see people in the community wanting to come forward and give us information about some of the things that are going on. And I, I really welcome that. Amazing. It, it is a fact that many people do not, <laughs> do not even trust the police. And it's, it's very unfortunate that we have, we have this to deal with. Um, my, my question would be, how, how have you been able to, to bridge this gap since, since you assumed uh, the role of commissioner? Uh, how have you been able to, 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 to integrate the police force, so to speak, with the community to build trust at that level? Talk with well, us. One of the first things I did was to, um, to reinstate community policing. So we've now got a community police officer in each of the districts. 
I want to expand that uh, community policing team uh, as resources allow me to do so. But uh, for some time, we weren't in the schools, in the colleges, in the community groups um, and things like that. So we've been able to get back into those, those settings now and start to engage with the community even more. Uh, and that does help to bridge the gap, but, if, but of course it takes time uh, and it takes a resource as well. But um, we're starting to see the benefits, I think, of being uh, more community focused, more community based, um, and, and, and seeing you know, the community responding positively to that. Amazing, amazing. I, I know what it can be when you have, um, <laughs> when you, you want to get your work done, things are happening and you're not able to, to, to get a word out of the community. That could be a little, a little disheartening perhaps. Um, it's good to know that you're working to bridge that gap to, to build trust at the, at the base. And, and that, that's very good. I think that's, that's commendable. The, the, in, in relation to crimes, as you mentioned, about how many have you seen this year? Crime-wise, we get about 1,150 crimes a year uh, right. across the territory. Um, uh, so, you know, break that down onto, onto month by month. It's, uh, you know, it's about 100 crimes a month, isn't it, really, uh, across the territory. Uh, and they would, they would range from being uh, vehicle offences, uh, burglaries, domestic matters, uh, and, and things like that. So, um, you know, uh, while, whilst the crime rate is, is not high, um, the detection rate is very good. We're running around 50% from detection rate. Uh, certainly when I was in the UK, a police force with a 50% detection rate would be unheard of. It would usually be running around 10, 10, 12% probably. Um, so, you know, we are, we are fortunate that uh, we do detect quite a lot of crime. Um, but the big thing for me is, is the quality of care that we give our victims. And the fact right. that we update victims of crime and keep them keep them on side with what's happening, and we're not very good at that. I I, I fully admit that. <laughs> uh, and 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 you know I've worked all over the all over the the world, if you like. And and you you know the, one of the biggest complaints we will get is that we don't we don't know what's happening to our particular crime in our investigation. So one of the things that we've started to introduce now is is, is quality callbacks, checking victims of crime, ringing them up, asking them how their experience was, and learning from that experience. Uh, mm. And that's a good that's a good way of ensuring that we keep focused. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Murders, if, if I were to be, if, if I'm to be specific, about how much have we seen so far this year, if any at all? So we, we tragically saw a murder in December, we saw a murder in January, and we saw one in February as well. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, we've already issued an arrest warrant for the murder in, uh, in, in, in December, uh, okay. and we're working very hard on the, on the other two murders that have occurred more recently. Um, mm -hmm. we, I've got a fantastic team a major investigation team uh, here um, and uh, they, they are working very very hard and one of the things that we've been able to do uh, in the last 12 months is to bring training and development to the islands um, mm -hmm. with with some some really experienced trainers what we call senior investigating officers coming over here imparting their knowledge and information and, and working alongside some of my officers here and mentoring them Mm -hmm. and doing an absolutely fantastic job. So uh, I, I really do commend the major incident team for all the work that they're doing. That is amazing indeed. The, 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 the level of aggression within the force, aggression to solve these, these murders, for example, because you find that some things might... might uh, in, in, in times back, perhaps, if, if I'm to be candid, there, there might have been may be a, a, a low rate of resolve in relation to murders. Since your time, I guess uh, you, you have perhaps adopted a more aggressive uh, 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 approach, perhaps, to ensuring that these things are, are resolved. Is... Well, I don't know. I'm not sure an aggressive approach is, is what I would call it. I think it's a focused approach, a focused uh, approach. and make, making sure that we've got the right people uh, working on, on, on these murder investigations. Um, right. And one of the things I was very keen to do when I first started was to start looking at some of the older cases that we've got. So we're now looking at some of the what we call historical cases, uh, murder investigations, and we're focusing on four of those at the moment. We're going to do some media work in the next few weeks. Uh, we're already speaking to the families uh, to, to obviously inform them what we're doing before we start knocking on doors and speaking to people. And, and basically, you know, the historical case review looks at all of the uh, all of the case, all of the cases that we've got. It looks at the forensic strategy. It looks at the witness statements that we took. It looks at the CCTV, uh, because of course there are changes in in terms of uh, DNA profiling or changes in terms of forensic strategies and advances in in, in forensic work. 
Um, mm -hmm. So we need to just make sure that we have had given every single opportunity to solve some of these outstanding matters. But that's a real focus for me, uh, and it is a focused approach. Good. There, there has been a kind of, uh, and, and, and if I'm to speak uh, uh, freely on this, <laughs> there has been perhaps a little, what you call it, a snag, if, if, if I may call it that. The, the local community is tight, a very tight community. And by virtue of it being as tight as it has been, you find that locals tend to protect local people. And, 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 and maybe that might be a good thing, perhaps. Um, the, the immigrant community might be more at risk, if you ask me, in relation to, 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 to not getting away with certain things, while the local community perhaps would be more protected by its own. How do you find that? Well, I think, I think it goes back to what I said at the outset about the, having that trust and confidence um, in, in policing, because yes. if people are going to come forward and give us information and intelligence, they want to make sure that, that information that they pass on and that intelligence that they give uh, is protected and, uh, and they are protected as well. Um, so, you know, that's really important to me. Um, and I, I, you know, I know that there's, there are some cases in the past where people have said they've given some information and that's, that's not been dealt with effectively. Uh, or, or confidentially, and that can't be right, um, which is why when I first got here, I put a message out to the community saying, you know, I'm the new commissioner, I've got no allegiances to anyone here, please come forward, and, and if you want to speak to me, then, then please do so. And actually, some people did come forward, um, mm -hmm. but as I said earlier, we're starting to see more and more response now from the community, and I think success breeds success, but also seeing investigations being worked through with a positive outcome at the end of it also gives the community the trust and confidence to come forward and give us information and speak to us. Mm -hmm. Amazing, amazing. The, 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 the police force itself, let us shift the, 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 the focus to the force itself, police men and women. There has been, and, and this is a known fact, we, we've, we've been dealing with a hell of a lot of economic stress and all kinds of things and so on and so forth. Uh, before I get to that question, uh, uh, how comfortable are, we, are you with the salaries that 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 your your that the that the members of the police force uh, are, are 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 taking home? Do you think that they are comfortable? Do you think something could be done to boost that to make sure that they are they are feeling a sense of of comfort uh, on the job type thing? Because this probably could be significant in relation to what I might ask you next. Okay, so so I, think, so I think um, one of the first things to say, I think, is, is the cost of living is very expensive in the Virgin Islands, yes. of course it is. And, uh, you know, I had a view when I first got here about second secondary jobs and, and secondary employment um, and, and whether some of those secondary employment jobs were uh, compatible with being a police officer. Um, but I came to realise very quickly that actually people rely on second jobs uh, to make ends meet, to put food on the table, to pay their, their bills and their rents and things like that. So... Um, I had to take a very pragmatic approach to this um, and we have, you know, we've introduced a business interest register so people declare what secondary employment they've got. I can look into that and I can be satisfied that there's no conflict of interest in terms of the work that they're doing uh, as a police officer. Uh -huh. But I, I, do, I do acknowledge that the cost of living is expensive and people need to, uh, to, 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 you know, sometimes to do a second job. As I say, in terms of salaries, you know, um, I, I think that the... The salaries that we get are probably equitable to other territories in terms of salary for police officers. Right. I think what we've started to do is to look at some of the other territories and look at the salaries there. We probably haven't had a review for a number of years. Um, but on occasions, unfortunately, some people have to wait sometimes to get their increments, to get their allowances, to get their yes. pay rises and things like that. And, and that does take a toll and uh, it does cause morale issues and, and issues within the organisation. But um, I have to say that I've been working very closely with the Honourable Premier, uh, yes. with the Financial Secretary, uh, and we've had some really good support uh, and um, uh, continue to get some good support in relation to what we're trying to do as, a, as, a, as an organisation. And that's yes. including allowing me to recruit some extra police officers as well, which I, I very much welcome. Good. Amazing. I, I like the fact that you're very candid about these things. and. <laughs> That's very good. Uh, I, you know, you, 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 you seem unafraid to address these matters, and that's very good. Um, 
very good as well that you're able to work through the issues with your with your officers. For those who need to get second job and all of that, very good, commendable. I must say that. Thank you. Because it does ease the stress. You know, it helps. It helps them to to, to function better. And and the, the, my my reason for asking that question is the fact that we, from time to time, and it depends on what the circumstances are, will find crimes being committed by police officers themselves as a result of trying to compensate for the economic shortfall. Um, if I may ask, how much of a problem is that here? Or, or is this well, here, per se? It, it's, a, it's a problem all over the world. It's, it's a, problem a problem all over the world. It's, this is not just unique to the British Virgin Islands or, yes. or to actually any other police force I've worked in uh, yes, uh, at all. Um, yeah, you know, we've already said the cost of living is very expensive here. Um, if people are waiting for salaries and, and, and you know, need to make ends meet, you know, mm -hmm. I, I've been quite open about this. Some of this, sometimes this does lead to low level corruption. Um, mm -hmm. And there is a standard, and this goes back again to the confidence and satisfaction uh, issue. You know, the, the community need to be confident and trust the police service. And there's a standard. And if people fall below that standard, then they need to be dealt with accordingly. And unfortunately, uh, that goes with the territory of being a commissioner of police that um, yes. on, on, on occasions you have to dispense with some people's services because they don't meet that standard uh, yeah. and but you know what i would say is you know please please don't tie everyone with the same brush because i've got some absolutely fantastic committed individuals that come to work every single day I'm sure you know and, and do a really good job in protecting our residents and our communities but unfortunately yes. we have got some people that don't meet that standard uh, and they get found out and when they get found out uh, we need to deal with them accordingly. <laughs> what, what, the, the, do you find much of these, per se? Uh, what have you seen? What have you been seeing? Well, I'm not going to go into the details because lots of these are matters are before the court or, or, I'm sure. or, or into discipline, uh, sure. in, in discipline within the organisation. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, we, we've had to suspend, I've had to suspend a number of people since I've been here. Um, uh, and I'm not, I'm not proud to say that. And it's mm -hmm. not a nice part of the job. But if I want to get the community on side and I want to get confidence restored or improved, then we have to we have to deal with these issues. So I've had to suspend, you know, a handful of people since I've been here. It needs to be said. It, 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 listen, sir, uh, uh, you know, and uh, we're having this discussion because these matters, if your job is going to be made easier, these things need to be brought to the fore so people can know exactly what is happening. And I think for the fact that you had to, uh, you, you have had to do what you had to do, it's commendable that you are you're on top of this and you're you're addressing it in a way that makes sense. And if our people, again, it goes back to trust. Yes? Yeah. If 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 we're going to build an environment of trust around the force, then these matters have to be addressed. You're talking about drug runnings and all of that. I'm not sure how prevalent that is here. I don't know. I won't get into that. The whole point is. If it is that people are going to be involved in some of these things that are going to be bringing disrepute to the force itself, then it's a matter that you would have to be very much on top of this to make sure that the, 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 the community is protected and preserved from such things. Now, uh, on the ground, you'll pick up a lot of things on the ground. People will be saying a lot of things on the ground. You'll hear a lot of stories on the ground. And uh, as you say, it's not unique to this territory. It's everywhere. The, the point is, my, my concern would be, how is this affecting the general man and woman on the ground in relation to police officers doing their job and be respected for it. It, 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 it boils down to that. If, 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 if people are going to see things happening and, and no one is addressing it and it continues to happen and, and it seems to become the norm, then people are going to wonder, you know, what kind of force is that? Yeah. Um, nothing that you might have control over anyway, but at the same time, you need the people to help you to fix these problems, yes? Yeah, and, and as I've said, you know, it's not just about the trust and confidence of the community, but yes. actually it's about the workforce as well, yes. understanding yes. that their colleagues cannot be allowed to commit criminal offences and, and, and discipline matters uh, yes. without, without going untested and unchallenged. And I think, you know, the vast majority of officers would, would, would appreciate what we're trying to do uh, and yes. work with me in, in achieving that. Yes. Do, do you think your officers are responsive to you in relation to helping you to keep the force, and this might be a crazy question, to keep the force pristine to keep the force clean to keep the force functional well i hope so i i think you know i set out my vision and my, my mission when i first got here and you know i've had a number of force meetings now sergeants meetings inspectors meetings and i've done station visits 
uh, and, and engaged and consulted far and wide with all of my officers. So they know where, where I stand, if you like, in terms of the standards and my expectations. I've been very clear about that. Yes. Now, of course, you know, as a new commissioner coming in, I say new commissioner, I've been here for 12 months now, uh, next week I think it is. Um, as a new commissioner coming in, you're going to make some changes and not everybody likes change and not everybody's going to do what <laughs> do. I, I get yes. that. Yes, but, yes. Um, but fundamentally, uh, you know, I think I think what I've set out to, to achieve and what we're working together as yes. an organization to achieve is the right way forward for us. Amazing. And and, and that's critically important, of course. Yeah. You, you, you won't be liked by everyone, you know, and won't you if you think everybody will like you. They're, 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 if you're doing the right thing, brother, you're going to have enemies. But I, think the big thing, is, I think the big thing there is, is yeah, you, you're quite right. Not everyone's going to like you, but as long as you can hold your head up and say, I've been fair, transparent, honest, uh, in in my in, in what I'm doing, then then you know the liking is 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 almost secondary to, to that. Absolutely, absolutely. We have with us uh, Commissioner uh, Mark Collins, and of course he is uh, an amazing commissioner. We we have had some chats a little early, and of course, looking at his position, looking at his mindset, looking at his approach, commendable, and I think. Uh, uh, the BVI could not have had a, could not have asked for a better representative, a better present, a better gift, but to have this gentleman with us to work through the issues in relation to crime and violence and protecting the integrity of the police force. I, I thought it is it is something that would would do well to have him here this evening so he could share with you exactly how he feels about some of these issues. And I'm very proud to have him here okay. as he uh, opened to us some of these matters. We look again, sir, uh, before we go to the break, there is a, 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 a periodic uh, media buzz on drug busts. Uh, uh, periodic. It doesn't happen too often. But, but once every while, you, it, it, it pops up. <laughs> you, you'll hear about a drug bust here and there. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how to shape this question properly to, to, <laughs> to probably... Um, yes, but in simple terms, when you look at the level of apprehension, you look at the leads to sources, you look at... Uh, protecting the, the, the dignity, the integrity of the force itself in relation to, 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 to cutting such connections. What's your impression of what you've been seeing? Sorry, Kenny, you're going to give me, uh, just run that past me again. I, I didn't get the, the, the actual question there. So, <laughs> so, um, you, what, what, what I can say to you is that we, we, don't, we don't hide behind anything in, in terms of media. Uh, anything that needs to be released is released to the media and we're, yes. we're pretty open and transparent about that because that's an important thing to do. Um, yes. You know, what I would say to you is last year we, we seized nearly three tons of cocaine. Uh, right. We seized 30 odd weapons. We seized huge amounts of cash. Um, and already this year we're starting to see uh, large numbers of, of firearms being recovered, drugs and cash again. So um, we are we are continuing to see that. Uh, and... Uh, you know, I, again, I've got some fantastic officers on my marine unit. We're out on yes. the waters every day. We work very closely with customs and immigration in the joint task force, uh, and 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 acting upon intelligence jointly, uh, which is really important. Um, so you know, we're all in this together in terms of of trying to combat crime and criminality mm -hmm. and, and to make our borders uh, as 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 non-porous as possible. Mm -hmm. We are connected to the US via the US itself. We, we, Easy commuting. It, it's, yeah. it's very easy commuting. Yeah. As you mentioned, large numbers of firearms and all of that. Does it make it any easier? And, and, and this is a very practical question I'm going to ask you. Because you look at business people uh, trying to protect their own interests. You look at families, homes trying to protect their own interests. You look at everything else that is connected to that. Do you think it would be a better idea, just asking, to... to, to to make the process of owning a firearm a, 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 a much easier matter, a, a process, because right now it is restricted, uh, technically restricted. And, and of course, even if 
you go through one area and they, they do give you the permission. You go to the other set that could turn it down. That in itself is creating a problem because if you said uh, you, you have been uh, uh, recruiting large numbers of firearms, it means that regardless of what is happening here, guns are everywhere. <laughs> How, what's the best approach? Should we legalize firearms in this territory as it is in the US VR or wherever else in the States? No. Or, it, it, or it are sure. we going to put a cap on it while the, 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 the now you call them criminals keep bringing in firearms and everybody has one? Well, my, 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 my quick answer to that is no, we shouldn't. We, we shouldn't have more and more firearms being given to people. Yeah. Um, the, the, the less firearms, the better. What we've got to do is be smarter and slicker in, in, in dealing with what's coming into the territory uh, yes. jointly, as I said, with the Joint Task Force and, and my Police Marine Unit. We've got to be, we've got to be tighter on, on some of the stuff that's coming in. Um, yes. And actually to give business, business owners weapons and things like that, you know, it's on a case by case basis that people apply. Uh, and there will be very few, in my opinion, that should be granted a firearm. Um, yes. We need to get we need to get less less guns on the streets, not more. But yes. but actually, you you mentioned the U.S. Uh, and if you look at the U.S. and its gun laws, uh, where you know it's almost second nature and and uh, you know a, 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 a given right to to own a firearm. You know the the numbers of firearms offences that are occurring in the USA uh, and those those territories is very 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 high. Uh, so, that. so I don't think it justifies uh, that, that cause whatsoever. But as I've said, no. I think that the pro we have a process here. Uh, we have a firearms committee that's, that's been set up. Uh, people can apply and it's on a case by case basis because there will be some occasions where we will want to authorise uh, for legitimate reasons. But um, it should not just be a blanket authority and legalise. No. Mm -hmm. I see where you are. I, I, I see where you are. So, so in, in relation to... Uh, but, 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 have you ever had, a, had an am well of course you're just here and, and of course you keep reiterating that and that's cool and i probably need to remember that yeah but do you think we might need to probably have an amnesty in place where people well, who wish to bring in their their firearms probably can can do that if that's the case yeah no i know i this is really interesting and topical that you just raised this actually because uh we've been discussing it uh, at national security council only a couple of weeks ago yes. and i'm in the process now of drawing up plans for an amnesty over the easter period uh, a gun amnesty over the Easter period. Now we've done one. I think it was two. I think 2017-18 was the last time the territory had a gun amnesty. Um, yes. But you're you're entirely right. There's an opportunity there for people to surrender uh, weapons if they want to. Uh, and um, uh, as I say, we're drawing those plans up now. Uh, and uh, the communication strategy, the media strategy to go with yes. it to get it out across the territory for an amnesty over the Easter period. Yes, indeed. <laughs> you see. Uh, my beloved brother, the, 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 the problem we have now is that people are getting hungry. Yeah? Uh, 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 maybe we need to stop and think about this very carefully, especially as government officials. And I need to address this very specific to them, because when the day is done, if, if, if it, it, it might get to the place where people can't get food, they might have to start rubbing to find food. It boils down to food, basically. Because when a man is hungry, Bob Marley says a hungry man is an angry man. When a man gets hungry, he, he gets dangerous. The, the point is, and, and I think this is a matter that, that our government needs to look at, not just here, but, but across the region perhaps, in, in relation to what opportunities we give to our young people to prevent them going down the road to acquire a gun as an incentive to live. It, it, it becomes a very serious matter. And I think not much emphasis is being placed on uh, uh, empowering our young people, apart from political chatter. It's crap. We've seen enough of that. What we need to see are practical programs in place which are going to offer our young people a, 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 a means of development, a means of earning, a means to sus the, the young man has his girlfriend and, 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 and two or three children or one child. How does he get food to feed them? These are some very practical elements we need to face. There is nothing in place as we speak to address that. Yet we expect to maintain a civil society. A little crazy, you ask me, my beloved brother. Yes? And, and well, I think the, the, this doesn't fall in your lap. I think, I think the, our government has quite a lot to do with that to help you to get your job done properly. I think um, we, we, we certainly saw over the COVID period uh, a spike in crimes uh, because of lockdown, because people weren't getting paid and getting salaries and things like that. So we saw 
uh, a rise in, in, in inquisitive crime, if you like, uh, yes. burglaries, motor vehicle offences, thefts, and things yes. like that. So there is a direct correlation, of course, to uh, to uh, you know e e the economy uh, and 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 in terms of crime, we, we certainly see that. Um, in terms of any programmes that are available, um, you know, as a, as a police service, we would welcome the opportunity to work closely with other agencies, partner agencies, and also the third sector in 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 uh, developing some some programmes if we can. Um, and you know, I'm already having discussions around some some incentives and some initiatives for young people on scooters and bikes to get legal, uh, and how we could work together on that because. Believe it or not, that is that is probably the biggest complaint that I get every week. Uh, is is around scooters and bikes and and yes. um, yes. antisocial behaviour, if yes. you like, and 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 that cannot all be about law enforcement. That needs a community-led approach to uh, you know, helping young people, diverting young people, uh, and and getting them legal. Because uh, you, we have seen over over in recent weeks, we've seen a tragic death again on the road, a scooter uh, rider killed. Uh, we've seen a number of accidents. Uh, and every one of these, and I say everyone, because I think I'm right in saying the fatalities that we've had have all been males. Everyone is a is a brother, a father, a son, an uncle, you know, uh, and 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 it's a tragic loss of life. Um, right. So we really do need to press for some uh, some definitely programs around being safe on the on the on the roads. Definitely. Right, right. We're speaking with Commissioner uh, Mark Collins, and of course. An amazing gentleman. He's here, and uh, I think he's he, as one who has just arrived, I think he's making some very significant strides to ensure that we keep things together right here in the BVI. I know it's going to be a challenge for him, and of course, in, with with a thorough understanding of the culture, I think he will have quite an obstacle to deal with. However, I think when the day is done, it is not for him alone to do this, and our government has a very, very, very serious responsibility to ensure that this commissioner functions at, at his best capacity to protect everyone within the territory. I'm going to take a break. When we come back, we have some more for you right here on PSI Network. Back in a minute. The last thing we always hear after trouble strikes is, if I had known. It is dangerous to take things for granted, then find yourself alone in deep mess with no one to turn to. Only you and you alone will suffer the consequences. Serious changes are taking place around the world, yet many of us continue to hop along our merry way, sadly uninformed and unprepared. Regardless of how safe you may feel, you will soon realize that unless you have a strong support system in place, life will become very difficult. This is why we must take immediate steps now to secure ourselves by becoming a member of a strong support system before things are too far gone. Lifeline Financial Programs is the strongest support system you can ever have. Lifeline offers the best option for social, financial and emotional support as we prepare to meet the challenging days ahead. Lifeline is the only program which offers not only financial support, but social and emotional support as well. Regardless of what anyone may say, if you do not have strong financial social and emotional support moving into the trying days ahead, you will face some very serious challenges. Find us now before your situation change for the worst. Take me seriously. Don't allow things to fall apart then you say, if I had known. Get registered with Lifeline Financial Programs today. Protect yourself. Let us shield you against the tough days ahead. Call us at 540-4555 or see us for more information. Lifeline Financial Programs. The gateway to a better future. Welcome back, and you're live with us right here on The Raw Truth. Uh, I am uh, Kenny G, and of course, when the day is over, you are locked right here on uh, 
PSI TV as we bring you a very special presentation with the Commission of Police of the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force in the British Virgin Islands. An amazing man. I, 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 he has a good heart for the force, for the people of this territory. And I think if given the support he needs, he will be doing an absolutely fantastic job here. I've, I've, I have all confidence in this, in, 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 this, in this gentleman. And of course, when the day is done, I think um, in his capacity as commissioner, um, if he gets the support he needs, he'll do an, an, an amazing job. If you wish to call, uh, if you would like to share with us, please feel free to call the number you're seeing on your screen. Uh, uh, feel free to call, to share, if you have a question you'd like to, sh to, to run by the commissioner. Yes, I'm sure he'll be very happy to, uh, to answer your question. If you would like to, to ask anything you want to ask him, feel free to call in to ask. I'm gonna open the line so you can, we can get your calls in yes um policing is not easy you know policing is a is a hell of a job and when the day is done <laughs> if some of you have some rude children in the house you can't even manage some of them sometimes as you imagine a, <laughs> a police force trying to control crazy people it's, it's it's not an easy job i i i I'll, I'll tell um Co commissioner collins i don't want his job at all especially in these times <laughs> when things seem to be popping off everywhere everywhere you go something is popping off it's not a joke man it takes a lot but um he he seems very poised for it as one with over over 20 or 30 odd years of policing to deal with this in a way that is going to make sense all right so uh i'm looking into the chat here um uh, uh i'm seeing gene gene is saying great to hear um, of course, she's talks, coming to us out of the BVI. Uh, can Colin share what his experience is like working in a territory that is um, predominantly black? <laughs> that, that's one of the, the, the... What, you think the man is racist? What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> talk, talk to me, Commissioner. <laughs> Somebody wants to know if you, if, how, how you feel working around black people. That's well, <laughs> absolutely no problem at all. Uh, um, you know, uh, actually, some parts of the UK are quite uh, diverse as well, uh, Kenny. Certainly when I was a commander in London, uh, I, I lived in uh, Waltham Forest, northeast London, which was a very high, high ethnic population. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, policing is policing. As I said, wherever you go, victims of crime are victims of crime, uh, whether they're black or white. Uh, and, um, and the community support is vitally important. And working in this territory has been nothing but fantastic for me so far. Yes. Lozette King is saying it is, it is absolutely fantastic to hear, um, uh, uh, well, well, let me get her word, intrigued. She says she's intrigued to hear a uh, 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 distinctly British accent coming from a commissioner of police in the BVI. Of course, what, uh, is it that you thought a BVI, BVI Lander would have been a police commissioner? Well, I guess the, uh, the, the custom, I think, for, for, for how long now? This has been so for a while, where the Commissioner of Police has been British. And um, I think it has been also the case, I think the other day that changed in relation to the management of the prison, where we had a gentleman from St. Lucia I think he was in charge of the prison. I'm not sure if that is back to another British uh, uh, person in command there as well. But um, there are some other matters, my beloved brother. The, 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 um, let us look at the, the indigenous community because this is another matter which we don't hear much about. Uh, indigenous people, but, and, and I'm sure you're, very, you're quite cognizant of this as well, um, where the, you have uh, subjects of the state in courts and you have the indigenous man and woman who live, they live uh, uh, a separate life technically. Uh, they have their own culture. They 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 have their own uh, uh, medicines. They 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 use their own indigenous uh, system as a way of life. As a as a as a man who is who is uh, 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 and deeply engaged in, uh, uh, and I should say this carefully, uh, in corporate affairs. If, 
if if an indigenous man or woman should should be within their right lawfully practicing their uh their their culture their way of life but the state says this is illegal how would you relate to that well give me give me an example kenny of what you mean there because for example uh uh in the, in, within the indigenous community, let's look at the Rastafarian people, for example. Uh, the weed, which from all we know is a God-given herb which grows everywhere while and if you drop a seed in no, in no time, it multiplies and spring all over the whole place. They use the weed to, for medicinal purposes. They use it as a sacrament. They use it for, for many other such uh, matters within the culture. But it is an established fact that the weed is illegal. <laughs> how, how do you deal with that? Well, uh, it's, it's very simple, really, because as you've just said, it's illegal. And persons that are using it illegally will be liable to arrest and, and, uh, uh, and, and punishment. Um, there is a debate ongoing at the moment around um, the health, the health uh, benefits for marijuana. Yes. And, um, you know, whether, whether we could uh, look at legalizing uh, some persons to to grow it for medicinal purposes but yeah. that's that's not been decided upon yet but um you know indigenous or not uh and and we we need to mutually respect each other and and our ways of life and our cultures and things yes. but it's very simple for me the law is the law and uh, and the police service is the police service that upholds the law and therefore yes. if someone is caught with with cannabis or marijuana then they'll they'll be arrested yes what i about do think i I do think, however, that we need to take a pragmatic approach to that. Um, yes. and, and, and please don't, don't, I don't want this to be misconstrued of what I'm going to say now. So certainly in the UK, uh, somebody of clean character with no previous convictions or, uh, you know, offences against them being found with a very, very small amount of cannabis, uh, we, would, we would give them a warning, a, a cannabis warning, uh, and, and not deal with them through the courts uh, and, and the, criminal, the criminal proceeds. Um, but, um, you know, that's something that we might want to look at in, in due course uh, as we go forward. But uh, the law is the law and it's illegal to, uh, to have it. Yes, illegal to have it. We are actually getting a call. Uh, 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 hello, are you hearing me? We have a call on the line. Are you, are you hearing me? Yeah, we, we, we're getting a call. Um, uh, good night, my brother. Are you hearing me clearly? Wonderful. And I, I hope the commission is hearing you as well. No, I'm not, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are you hearing him, Commissioner? No. Uh, no, he's not hearing you. All right, let me, let me, let me, hang up. Let me, let me patch you in, in another way so at least he can hear you. Because I think some of these matters in relation to what is happening, we, we and I think this is a local call as well. Quite interesting that we will need to examine some of these in a very practical way as well, uh, moving forward. All right. All Hi, right. Uh, go ahead. Are you hearing us now? Yes, Mr. Kenny, are you Good, and I'm sure, I'm sure the commission night, is hearing Mr. you now, right? Yes? Good evening. Yeah, go ahead, uh, my brother. Talk talk with us. What's yes, on your um, mind? Mr. Commissioner, um, I have a little problem here What I, I cannot get solved. I purchased a vehicle from this young lady, and she said, is there... The starter is not working. So um, I look on it and she said it's just the starter the vehicle needs. So when um, I take the vehicle, she told me she is police and she working in the crime division and stuff like that. So true, she told me she is a police now. I just went ahead and told her if the engine 
is damaged, I don't want the vehicle because I just look at something to go to work. She said nothing wrong with the engine. So I give her the money because she told me she is police. So when I give her the money now, when I take the vehicle and I wreck her, bring it by the mechanic and the mechanic check it, he take off the starter and I go and fix the starter and rebuild it. Come to find out the engine damage. Hmm. So the vehicle is no good. So the mechanic tell me um, I must tell the young miss that the, the engine is damaged. I call her and I told her, she told me, okay, bring back the vehicle. I tell her when I finish work, I go and get the wrecker. When I reach with the wrecker, when I finish work, no one answering them phone. Hmm. So the um, our boyfriend, our husband, sending me all kind of message on my phone. So I went by the police station to make a report. And the police tell me, don't make sense. I make a report because um, this is not police matter. So I asked them why. Because apparently, if she didn't tell me she was a police, she would have not, she would have never get my money until the mechanic totally check the vehicle. So to me, she, she, she used the police to impersonate police because <laughs> she working, she working in the police station. She have her office, she told me she could buy her office for the receipt book. So I feel so safe believe that I deal with a police. Come to find out from one of the police now when I went by the station, they asked me who I'm not explaining. The police said she's not a police. So I said, so if I did know that she would have never get my money in mm. first place mm. until I totally checked the vehicle out. So now I stuck with a dead vehicle no one want to answer them phone. And I call our boss, who she working with. And the boss said, she said her husband called me already. Which we, me and the husband didn't have no business agreement. And he did not call my phone. He just sending all kind of message on my phone. So I think right I... Now, I with yeah. our damaged vehicle where she sold me, telling me it's just a starter. Yeah. So I just asked you what could I do? I think I think the best thing for you to do is to, to um, Yeah, I think the best thing for you to do is to give your details give your details to uh, take back our, our damaged vehicle that the engine is mash up. Yeah. I think the best thing for you to do is to give your details to the uh, to the uh, program, uh, and they can give them, give me your details after the program is finished, and we can uh, discuss the matter tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Pleasure. Pleasure. Okay, my brother. Thank you so much for. Um, thank you so much for for sharing that with us. The, you find these situations, Commissioner Collins, and it, it's, it's, <laughs> it's... First of all, a case like that you're talking about, impersonation of police, it, it, isn't that not, is that not a criminal matter? Yeah, I think we need to be very careful with this because clearly the, uh, the, uh, there's, there's possibly a civil dispute there in terms of the vehicle not being what was, it was purported to be. But yeah. if someone is actually... Uh, of course, um, impersonated a police officer or um, said they were to, to gain any, any, anything from it, uh, then of course the matter is, is, is that's a criminal matter, which is why I've asked the gentleman to uh, make contact uh, with me for, for you to give him, uh, my, sorry, for him to give you my details uh, and we'll speak tomorrow morning uh, about the matter and, and uh, if it needs to be investigated, uh, I can assure you the matter will be investigated. Wow, that is sad though. Wow, quite interesting. 
Uh, let me caution uh, folks, whether you're police or not, whoever you are, whatever, what, you know, if, if you're doing business, if you're doing, um, if you're doing business um, uh, at any level, when it comes to the matter of, um, <laughs> you have to be, we have to be so careful that we are being prudent in our actions in relation to, to, to how we conduct our business, because you could literally put yourself in trouble uh, by doing so. And, 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 and it's very unfortunate that, that the, the, this brother uh, has had to, to be de- is now dealing with the situation, thinking that this woman is a police officer when she's not. It's very sad. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's take another call. Uh, uh, I think we have another call on the line. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Good evening. Hi, Kenny. Kenny? Hey, yes, how are you doing? Hi, Kenny. Yes, greetings, greetings. How are you, Miss King? Good, good. You hearing me? Yes, I'm hearing you well. Go ahead. Right. Um, I'm delighted to to hear the, the, the discussion you're having with the Commissioner of Police. Yes. And I, I was even more delighted to hear that he's working in Walton Forest. That's my hometown. Maybe. Ah. Um. What I want to ask him is about the protocol he has in place for complaints of rape. Rape is a big problem in the Caribbean, and it happens in my country. It happens very regularly within the police force, or they seem to get away with it a lot of the time. So I wonder what he, what protocol he has in place, and. Um, if well what he's met there and what he's doing to change it if if at all any changes i listen offline yes okay thank you thank you for the question yeah yeah you're you're entirely right um rape is is one of the most serious offenses of course it is um but i'm pleased to say that we've got our own family and juvenile unit uh we have uh, specialist officers that are trained for dealing with uh the rape allegations uh, and, and we have a protocol in place in terms of the victim's rights and the victim's charter. Um, so uh, rapes, rapes do get reported, rapes get investigated and people get charged and put before the court. So I'm quite confident that we've got a specialist team there that's available to receive complaints and to deal with them effectively. The big thing I think is in terms of sexual offences is getting the matter before the court as soon as we possibly can so uh, we get we 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 keep the confidence of the victim uh, in in ensuring that what we're trying to do uh, is is dealt with as speedily as, as speedily as possible, basically. Well, there is a bigger problem, though, my beloved brother, and I, I, I probably should say this here because when you look at what has been happening in relation to young women getting involved with with some of our men, the circumstances surrounding this is is quite 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 questionable. We're living in tough times. People are having serious financial problems, for example, apart from selling a woman selling herself for money. Not everyone is going to be involved in that sort of thing. Now, where one does not have a choice, for example, or is forced into doing certain things simply because they do not have uh, the financial means to cope and they're trying to find a way out. It, isn't this repsa? Well, it certainly would be human trafficking and there certainly would be offences there. Um, you know, we need to be very careful in terminology in terms of a woman that, that you know, um, is a prostitute uh, and yes. prostitutes herself uh, yes. for, 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 for financial gain. Uh, yes. You know, I think we should be seeing and looking upon these as victims as well and, right. and supporting. And again, it comes back, Kenny, to what you were saying earlier about having different programs in place to support victims. Right. Uh, and, and But certainly there would be an offence of, of human trafficking uh, uh, if, if anyone, if females were brought into the territory uh, and and used for for sexual exploitation uh, right. with, without a doubt yes wow but this seems to be coming this this seems to be becoming a very interesting matter sir I, I, you, you look at the fact that everything is now wrapped into the whole economics of our survival perhaps the, 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 this now is pre- perhaps a very questionable matter where, where does it stop well it is it is uh, you know it's it's a very serious matter uh, and again, all I can say to you is if we get any, any allegations or any 
intelligence or information about sexual trafficking or on human trafficking, uh, then we'll deal with it most robustly. I, I can I can promise you that. Um, and we do deal with, with with situations where people are are making allegations about trafficking and things. So um, you know, please be rest assured that if we get complaints uh, and information, then we'll deal with it. What do you call a situation where a club, for example, and, and <laughs> this might be a very interesting one to ask you. Uh, uh, we have nightclubs here in the territory. And uh, of course, you have some very, very, uh, I'm, uh, let me coin my words properly. I, I, I don't want to speak loosely here. But some of these women are very, very, very um, voluptuous, if you may have me put it in quotes. And they bring them in and these men visit these clubs. They get sex, they get wine and brandy they get all the alcohol and the booze they want along with sex and it, 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 it's just a part of the, the system what's your take on this well let me be very clear there is no there is no licensing uh, for uh, sex clubs or, or or strip clubs and things like that we don't license uh, and, and 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 it's not legal um and again if we if we get information and intelligence then we'll go and visit the clubs and i think we need to look at the licensing act actually uh, and be more robust around licensing laws, uh, around CCTV, around security, uh, because some of our serious incidents have occurred in nightclubs, of course. Um, but there is no legal framework for uh, a licensed premises to be a licensed strip club or, or um, a strip show bar. Uh, that's, that's, not, that's not within the legal framework of the licensing laws. Wow. Wow, wow. And I'm sure what? it goes on. I'm sure it goes on. And, you know, uh, I think, we, you know, we know that. But what I'm saying, if we get complaints and, and uh, there are issues, then we will deal with it. For women who have been exploited, my brother, and uh, uh, you know, you know, I'm speaking with you really as 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 someone with a heart tonight, because it it seems to me that these crimes just get swept under the rug, depending on who commits it. And um, if, if, if it's one of the big boys, oh, that's just one of the big boys. But if it's a little man around the corner, you lock him up to him in jail for 10 years. <laughs> well, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't operate in, in that, with that philosophy at all. Um, you know, what I would say to you uh, very clearly is nobody is above the law. Nobody is above the law. And if allegations are made uh, and they're investigated, I don't care who they are, they will be prosecuted. Good. So our women within the BVI listening to this broadcast right now need to take a very proactive position. If you find yourself in a compromised position, if you find yourself being raped and uh, if someone is pretending like it didn't happen, you know what rape is. If you say no and they still do it, it's rape. Period. Yes. And uh, it's, it, 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 yes, any, anything that is going against your will. Man or woman, because we, we, we tend to think that it's only the women who are being raped nowadays. Men are being raped too. And as, I, and as I said, Kenny, we've got specialist officers that are available to speak to victims confidentially and deal with the matter most effectively. So, you know, my, my, my uh, plea again, uh, as yours is, would be to say, if you are witnessing domestic abuse or sexual exploitation or rape, uh, then please come forward and report it to us. On that note, we take a short break. When we come back, we're going to be wrapping up. Stay tuned. The last thing we always hear after trouble strikes is, if I had known. It is dangerous to take things for granted, then find yourself alone in deep mess with no one to turn to. Only you and you alone will suffer the consequences. Serious changes are taking place around the world, yet many of us continue to hop along our merry way, sadly uninformed and unprepared. Regardless of how safe you may feel, you will soon realize that unless you have a strong support system in place, life will become very difficult. This is why we must take immediate steps now to secure ourselves by becoming a member of a strong support system before things are too far gone. Lifeline Financial Programs is the strongest support system you can ever have. Lifeline offers the best option for social, financial and emotional support as we prepare to meet the challenging days ahead. Lifeline is the only program which offers not only financial support, but social and emotional support as well. 
regardless of what anyone may say, if you do not have strong financial social and emotional support moving into the trying days ahead, you will face some very serious challenges. Find us now, before your situation change for the worst. Take me seriously, don't allow things to fall apart then you say, if I had known. Get registered with Lifeline Financial Programs today. Protect yourself. Let us shield you against the tough days ahead. Call us at 540-4555 or see us for more information. Lifeline Financial Programs. The gateway to a better future. All right. Welcome back. And of course, as we wrap up, very interesting discussion right here with uh, Commissioner uh, Mark Collins. And of course, very interesting issues as well, uh, matters of concern. Uh, I think uh, Miss uh, King wants to ask another question. P please drop it in the chat, my dear, so we can, um, we, we, can, we can shoot it at the Commissioner. One of the questions that I'm seeing here, sir, the, 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 the matter of leaders, political leaders, and this seemed to have become one of the, the a very nasty plague, if you ask me, um, given the fact that many people across the, the region, if you may ask, is, uh, uh, are impoverished, technically. They don't have the means to survive. They, they have to go, if they want a dollar here or there, they go to, go to the politician. And when the women, especially, go to the politician for help, politicians are asking sexual favors from these women. How would you address this? Well, clearly that, that is unacceptable behavior, Kenny. Uh, and as I said uh, at the outset and, and through the meeting tonight, um, if we have any reports or allegations made, we will investigate the matters. Uh, that's all I can say. <laughs> In closing, my beloved brother, leave a word with our community as we uh, watch you from all over the world. In closing, what would be your final words? Well, I just I, I would close by saying thank you very much for having me on the program tonight. Um, uh, as I said, I'm coming to the end of my first year in office now. Um, Thank you for the welcome that I've had. Uh, the BV Islanders are hospitable, friendly people, uh, and I want to be a commissioner that does a good job for them. Um, uh, and um, the other thing I would say is we're looking to recruit very soon, new recruits, uh, and I want as, as many BV Islanders uh, to, to be recruited into the organization as I possibly can. So we'll be going out to advert soon, uh, and I welcome applications to, to be part of this fantastic organization uh, and I've closed finally, Kenny, just by thanking all of my officers and staff for the tremendous work that they do day in and day out, um, uh, because they really do do a fantastic job. Uh, and I've seen the commitment there. We don't get it right all the time, uh, and I'm big enough to say we don't get it right all the time. And when we don't get it right, we need to put it. We need to put things right and apologise, uh, and, and 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 try and work with the community. So, thank you very much for having me on the show. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure having you, sir. And uh, when the day is over, we thank you for making the time as well to appear. Um, this is valuable, absolutely valuable to have you in your capacity addressing the issues as they appear. And um, uh, it means much to have a commissioner who is flexible, one who is reachable, and one who has a heart for people. These are some very uh, uh, commendable traits, okay. which must be... Uh, 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 the hallmark of all who uh, seek to occupy such a position. And uh, from what I'm seeing, you seem to qualify absolutely. And of course, we thank you so much for being uh, who you have been and who you are. Uh, it means much. Well, PSI TV is always here and whatever happens, we'll be very happy to reach out to you. Uh, you this much. is a, a relationship that we will cherish and we will maintain. Okay. So you take care of yourself. All the best until we catch up the next time around. Thank Thanks. you very much, Kenny. Thank you. Good night. Okay, my brother. That was Commissioner uh, Mark Collins of the RVIPF, Royal Virgin Islands Police Force in the British Virgin Islands. And of course, from what I'm seeing here, he seems to be one of the people who are, uh, <laughs> if you ask me, a no-nonsense man. How much will you like him? I don't know. 
um, people who stand for something tend not to be liked too, too much by some of us. Uh, will he get the support at the community level? The BVI community needs to make sure that you, you, if you are going to live a life that is going to make sense to you and your children and your generation after you, you have to set the scope for that now. The more foolishness you put up with now, the more foolishness you open for your children to deal with in their time. The more you seek to protect them by doing the right thing now, then you would have left a legacy for them. We do hope you enjoy this program. And of course, uh, please leave your comments uh, uh, in the comment section. And of course, uh, for those of you who are just joining us, please feel free to subscribe to the page and click the notification bell that whenever we send out our, infant, our uh, updates, you will be first in line to receive them. Please share this with your friends, especially if you're around the BVI, because this will become a very important matter for you to, uh, to follow. And uh, uh, in order for you to, 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 keep connect, to stay connected with what is coming next, on The Raw Truth on PSI TV. Uh, thank you so much for joining us and whatever you do, take care of yourselves. Uh, I'm also, before I, I leave, I'm asking our politicians across the BVI and other parts of the Caribbean region, COVID mandates have fallen in many countries across the world. They are falling. They are being removed. Please do not allow your people to suffer unnecessarily by keeping these mandates in place. Because if, if countries over 100,000 people are removing them totally, that their people can become economically empowered once more so that they can take care of themselves and do what they have to do. We know that the mandates have done a lot of damage to our communities because people cannot function the way they want. They can't travel the way they want. They, can go, they can't go where they want to go. Puerto Rico has lifted all mandates, uh, 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 Quebec, in Canada, and I could go on and on and on, naming places including Britain, which they all have lifted mandates in many areas, if not all. The Caribbean now needs to rise to the task and remove all mandates that our people can at least be able to earn themselves a decent livelihood so we can move back to sustaining ourselves. When the day is done, nothing is more effective. The police commissioner is here. And of course, uh, when the day is done, we don't want to give him uh, unnecessary work because we have not been playing our part and our young men are becoming criminal minded and taking up the gun to go get food and all of that. You don't want that. So this is a special alert, special appeal to our politicians. Stop talking votes. Do what is necessary for the people to save themselves. The, the vote talk ain't going to help some of you right now because some of you will be voted out anyway. Let's do the right thing. The people are waiting for you to do the right thing that they can be restored at least a certain level of normalcy, a certain level of function that they can live their lives in peace and provide for their people. Do that. And when the day is done, you don't have to ask for votes because they would have seen your work and it would come easy for them to do what is necessary. You're talking about election? That's a whole nother discussion right here on PSI Network. Stay tuned, of course. It will be coming your way soon. All the best until we catch up later. And uh, take care of yourselves. We keep you in touch. All the best. fundamental belief, I am my brother's keeper, I am my sister's keeper, that makes this country work.
Some people are divided by religion, yeah. Oh, yeah. Some people are divided by their greed, yeah. Some people are divided by deception, yeah. Oh, yeah. Some have a lot of money but still in need, yeah. The time has come to help your hurting brother. Time has come. To think about your sister, can't turn a blind eye to their need, yeah. Share some love to help your hurting brother. Share some love to help your fallen sister. One God, one faith, one destiny, yeah. It's time for unity.